Good afternoon. I'm Steve Basnick, and along with Aaron Marsden, I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of Canasa and Security Canada to our weekly online learning session. I would like to say a special thank you to Alvarado for their support and sponsoring today's session. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Troy McCleary, uh, Alvarado Sales Canada. Troy has a strong technical background as well as 20 years of progressive sales and leadership roles in the physical, hardware, and electronic security markets, and is focused on increasing market share through customer satisfaction. Troy is now part of the Dorma Cava Sales Group and is responsible for increasing Alvarado's brand awareness across Canada. Feel free to type any questions you may have for Troy into the Q&A window in the bottom of your screen and Troy will respond roughly 20 minutes from now. I'll now turn the session over to Troy. Welcome, Troy, and thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Steve. And um, thank you to Security Canada for hosting this today. And of course, to everybody that's online for the next few minutes. Um, just before you go, Steve, can you confirm that the screen is being shown right now? Yes, sir, it looks good. Perfect. Okay, so for the next few minutes, we'll talk a little bit about turnstiles and uh, how you can realize the benefits from turnstiles inside of a facility or on the outer perimeter. And um, as Steve mentioned, we'll have a copy. I think he mentioned we'll have a copy of this presentation available for download if you wish after the, the meeting or after this presentation today. <clears throat> so having said that, we'll start very quickly with who Alvarado is. Uh, quick background to them, they have been around since the 50s in a small town called Chino, California, just outside of Los Angeles, about an hour away. They uh, started, got, pardon me, they got their, their feet wet in the Southern California grocery market, queuing people coming into the store and all the way through to the checkout counter. Um, fast forward today, they have an 80,000 square foot facility that has everything there. They manufacture there, they do R&D, tech support, and they ship from there around the world. Um, I, but primarily, we're here in North America, but we have a large footprint within South America, the Middle East, and into Australia. Having said that, we've got um, projects all over the world, and, and if you follow me on LinkedIn, you'll probably see installation photos uh, every other day there. Um, as of last summer, Alvarado was acquired by Dorma Caba, who also is a manufacturer of security door hardware, um, access control systems, interior glass systems, and coincidentally enough, they also manufacture entrance control products, including revolving doors and secure portals. So we've got a pretty large footprint to play with. So if we start really quickly from the beginning, there's always been a need to, inc to add some type of a controlled entrance into authorized areas. And we've had several different methods of doing that. And for the most part, it works, but we still got a few of those unscrupulous folks who are finding ways to circumvent that controlled entrance to gain access. So because of that, turnstiles were developed to create that controlled entry point for authorized people going into authorized areas. And so again, fast forward to today, we still have some of those unscrupulous people around, unfortunately, um, and, and we're finding them accessing our, our facilities. And part of one of the ways of accessing is through tailgating, which is still one of the biggest and most widespread security breaches affecting our business today. The effects of tailgating, the most of the effects are rather innocent it's folks holding open the door for their fellow coworker because their hands are full. But for those other occurrences, those tailgating effects can result into theft, whether it's property theft or personal theft, um, or whether it's injury, folks walking into a job site without knowing the dangers involved, uh, whether or revenue loss in membership-based facilities, up to and including violence. And so to combat some of those challenges, if you will, management has found ways to lock down doors throughout the facility and put 
different types of uh, access control measures into it, which is good for the majority. It keeps people out. But once that door opens up, unfortunately, we don't know if just one person went through that door or multiple people went through. And being Canadians, we're pretty well polite. We're generally polite and out of habit. We will open those doors and hold them open for people behind us, despite what the sign's saying, despite what the security manager's telling us. Uh, we just do that because it's our nature. And so to combat that, management is uh, adding guards to control entrances, if you will. But unfortunately, the cost for guarding keeps going up year over year. And of course, we're always dealt with operating budgets being scrutinized for efficiencies. And sometimes, and typically, security is one of those areas that seems to get cut back when we have to start rationalizing uh, budgets. So in result of that, then management sometimes, uh, sometimes says to employees, you know, we need you to start asking questions. Who are you? Challenging those unknown visitors, if you will, which makes it an uncomfortable situation for people at some times. Some people like to do it, not so, many, not so much the other people. So a solution for that, of course, is turnstiles. Turnstiles not only provide that barrier, that physical barrier between the public and the authorized, it's an attractive looking barrier. Its primary purpose is to detect, tail, pardon me, detect tailgating and announce it, or, or at least provide you with real time um, events that tailgating is occurring. It integrates with access control systems, with guest entry systems and video systems, so you can have a holistic system throughout your facility. The benefits to turnstiles is it frees up the guards or the staff that are watching those, those entrances so they can perform other duties, or if you need be, start rationalizing your op costs. Um, again, it reduces the need for staff to challenge folks in that facility because it's doing it for you right at the beginning. Um, they help you um, by understanding and, and you know, providing with information about occupancy levels because it can track how many people are coming in and leaving. And that helps you with assisting in real time who's within, the, who's within your facility. So it offers a more controlled environment for your, your, your employees, if you will. And it assists with the owner's duty of care, uh, their commitment to, your, to this, the people within the building. So here is a short video of examples of tailgating um, put on by Alvarado. And if you wish to view the entire YouTube, it's about a five minute clip. You can click on this link below. Let me try that. And wouldn't you know it, now it doesn't want to work. So without further ado, that clip does work, but it's not working at this point in time. Uh, maybe if I just go to a different screen here quickly, I doubt that's going to work for us, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. So really what I was going to show was tailgating going in and tailgating coming, going into the entryway and coming up from the exit way. We'll just skip ahead. Here. So we're going to find turnstiles located within the facility of, 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 uh, of buildings. Typically, you'll see them in the front areas, the, the lobby areas, the front desk areas. And that really provides that line in the sand between the public and the authorized. It gives you the ability to challenge the authorized people to present their credentials to validate that they belong in that facility and enter the premises before they actually get into the secure area of the premise. And it allows you that barrier to keep unwanted or uninvited people from entering until they've been vetted. You'll see this in the front areas. You'll see them in elevator banks. And some people might ask, why would you have them in elevator banks as opposed to front lobby areas? Um, and for anybody who's ridden in the elevators before that may have a card reader in the cab, that's great. It allows people access to the certain floors that they're supposed to have and they can't get to other floors. But if you think back to riding the elevator, how many times did you see a pizza delivery guy standing in the elevator cab with you or Uber Eats or whoever it may be that you know for sure didn't have credentials and was getting off on a secure floor delivering their flowers or their pizza, whatever it might be. Having 
barriers in front of that prevents those folks from even entering the cab to begin with. Further inside the facility, if you've got restricted areas like secure storage areas or server areas, you can um, employ other types of turnstiles to restrict access that way. And if you have to provide audits like Sarbanes-Oxley or CTPath or for uh, Health Canada for cannabis, employing turnstiles within the facility that force people to card in and card out helps you build that report that you need for your auditing purposes essentially immediately. And then of course, on the outside of the facility, you'll see turnstiles on the fence line. And that helps you um, secure those areas where traditionally a chain link fence and padlock would be, would be there to allow people in and out of the facility. So the next is a video, which is probably gonna be the same as before and not work. Um, and this video here was going to show different integration methods. Optical turnstiles are inherently contact, contactless. So in today's pandemic world that we're dealing with, um, turnstiles are great, optical turnstiles in buildings are great because you don't touch them. You present some type of credential to the turnstile and that credential will validate you and without having to touch anything, open the gates and allow you through and yet close the gates on folks who don't have a credential behind you. Um, our most important value uh, when, we, when we work with clients is to ensure that whatever technology that they wish to use, whether it's RFID or if it's Bluetooth or, or even the thermal scanners that folks are, uh, are using today for, for temperature sensing, um, our, our importance is to make sure that we have a housing that creates a secure area for that, that reader, that scanner to be housed in so it doesn't get damaged and yet still works 100% of the time. So essentially any turnstile can receive any type of credential to ensure that it works correctly. Other areas that we're gonna find turnstiles would be in verticals like sports and leisure or rec centers. Um, and again, it provides that line in the sand between the public and the authorized or the paid membership. Um, where you, why you're seeing them in this type of environment is the, the ability that it now takes away the need for additional staffing to monitor those entrances. Uh, to monitor those entrances. It, um, just like before, it can monitor occupancy counts for areas like pools, where you can only have so many people in the pool per lifeguard. Um, gives you that uh, availability. It integrates again with any type of access or facility management software, which is great in a, uh, a membership-based environment, because now Instead of having the folks at the counter challenge you because you haven't paid your fees and you're not up to date, the turnstiles have no empathy. They have no conscience. They'll challenge anybody to present their credential in order to pass. And if you're not valid, if you're not up to date, if your fees are in arrear, you don't get through until you pay up. So many different types of applications, many different types of installations with uh, credential technology, contactless, if you will, to get through to the other side. And we may, maybe we'll get lucky with this one here. So here's another facility with contactless, if you will, optical turnstiles and using the latest Morpho. And yet we're not working with the Morpho either. But essentially it's a, we probably, you may have seen the Morpho readers in the past. Um, this one particular client wanted them integrated within the cabinetry of the lane. And so whether it's, Morpho wave in and Morpho wave out, or however they want it, we're able to customize the product to meet that type of example. Um, so I was hoping that we would have this resolved, but let's continue on here. Um, well, turnstiles can be a large undertaking, depending on the, the, the size of the project that you're looking for. And um, sometimes visual aids really help when you're presenting your conceptual ideas to the decision makers. So Alvarado has a service where they can uh, overlay photos of different types of turnstiles onto the photo to provide that 
that conceptual idea of how the project will look when it's completed. Um, it's been well received by many and um, we have the ability to overlay almost any type of technology of turnstiles, if you will, on these photos. Um, and um, it gives you that leg up, if you will, when you're having your conversations with the, the decision makers. Another element or area for turnstiles would be outside, as we mentioned earlier, on the perimeter. And these are mainly used to replace that traditional chain link, pad, or chain link gate with a padlock, which is probably good for minimal amount of employees because they're probably pretty cognizant of opening and closing and padlocking when they leave. Uh, but when you've got multiple employees, it gets very difficult to manage. And you know they, they, they try to put access control on chain link gates and it works for a while, but eventually with the heaving and all the different elements within the winters, um, the alignment goes off and, and unfortunately it just doesn't work. So replacing that with a stand, a, a solid full height turnstile, if you will, that's built for the environment, whether it's in the Arctic or here just in Canada, um, it, it weathers the environment and it works to provide that mantra of one person, one credential, one passage. So in the areas where you need to have uh, real-time counts of who's on site, having card in, card out on technology like this allows you to have that instantaneous reports for mustering if you need to have emergency evacuations. Full light turnstiles can come in multiple different types of shapes and sizes and in looks and feels from the standard basic military looking galvanized um, to more of a upscale powder coated and oversized if you will when it comes to larger uh, venues like zoos uh, outdoor facility like water parks will utilize larger spin wheels like we see on the right hand side um, they can even be incorporated with uh, aoda swing gates for for accessibility access or for to receive oversized parcel delivery because it's quite difficult to to take assets out of the facility or even bring them into the facility um, but it does guarantee that you know who's coming through those fence lines so these are uh, manual these are touch and because of the uh, the recent events that we've seen Alvarado has rebuilt or remanufactured the motor or the, the top channel to, to convert from a manual activation to a motorized activation. So this next slide is not motorized, it's not working on us, but this is an example, um, it will be an example of this individual right here walking up to the turnstile, presenting their credential and in this instance here, they're using the hand wave that you see at the bathrooms today, those hands-free bathroom entries, using the hand wave to activate the motor. The motor spins the rotor, the, the turnstile itself, and allows the employee to walk straight through without touching any of the bars. Um, I can't tell you how many thousands of these turnstiles Alvarado has out in the field already. And since we've launched this motorized top channel, the calls to upgrade the existing units are, uh, are daily. So it's a great addition to this contactless technology. And I apologize for the video not working as it should, um, but you'll probably see this when, we can, when you can download it. And there you can also go to our website or my LinkedIn page and you can see our examples of it there. For folks who don't uh, want to upgrade to a motorized version, uh, we do also have these copper sleeves here that can fit over existing arms. And of course, we know that copper is an easier substance to, uh, to maintain than standard metal that's outside right now. So it's a, an easier way to clean things and keep things less, less gross, if you will. So we had 20 minutes, but because of the video shortage, we're probably a little bit early. So I'll just take a few minutes here to let you know that um, just recently Alvarado has joined forces with AOC and um, our party AEC and created a one hour turnstile 
um, mm -hmm, turnstile video slash training course. It is provide it does provide credits for those who are enrolled with that uh, application, uh, but it does give a great overview in a generic term of the benefits that turnstiles can provide. And there's a Q and A session throughout that you can answer questions with, but it gives you a very good overview of. Uh, where turnstiles can be affected and what types of organizations and things to look out for when you are making those decisions to incorporate turnstiles into your facility. So having said that, Steve, I think um, we're pretty close to their time period. So how about if I turn it back over to you and open up the floor for any questions that may be there. Great. Thanks, Troy. Appreciate you not uh, filling that time with singing. <laughs> you know, uh, try to get through the first question here. It's a bit long, uh, but the indoor glass turnstiles at elevator banks or open areas do not provide denial of entry to active threats as outdoor perimeter rotating turnstiles provide. How to correct this vulnerability without giving a high security bunker-like appearance? Let me know if you want me to repeat that. that that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, so asking about how we can, um, sorry, put turnstiles in a corporate lobby that are like, like this. Is, maybe you repeat the question one more time. Yeah, I think uh, I'll, I'll start with the, uh, the end of the question. How to correct this vulnerability without giving a high security bunker-like appearance? Okay, okay. So the majority of folks are using something similar to this. It doesn't, doesn't really um, go between or change between manufacturers. Um, some type of cabinetry with either low barrier panels or higher barrier panels. Um, and they can go as high as six feet, seven feet to provide that, uh, to provide that barrier, if you will. But what you need to be considerate of is the throughput. So um, something like this will provide a very high throughput because it, that's what it's meant for, that throughput of anywhere from 30 to 60 people, depending on how, very, how good your employees are. Um, whereas something more to the effect like this bottom right or bottom left picture here, a full height turnstile or a revolving door or a secure revolving door would probably answer, uh, provide an answer or solution to your question. Um, however, the throughput on that would be as low as potentially five to 10 people per minute. So the consideration is a trade-off between uh, throughput ratio and time, how much time you have and how many people you have that need access into that facility. So it's a long-winded answer to uh, probably even a more long-winded answer um, as they decide to move forward. Okay, thanks, Troy. Uh, just so you know, uh, nothing was coming up on the screen there uh, if you were showing us something. Oh, sorry. We just got a resume side uh, slideshow message. Uh, I'll jump you to the next question. Does this turnstile support anti-passback? Uh, well, anti-passback is generated through the access control system itself. Um, and so it's the access control system that's telling the turnstiles what to do to grant uh, entry or not to grant entry. So the answer is yes. The turnstiles will take their orders, the marching orders from the access controls. And if, they're, if it's integrated there for anti-passback, it'll be delivered here for anti-passback. Okay, thanks. Uh, the glass turnstiles, do they come in customized widths or standard sizes only? Um, so the answer here is yes, they are all customizable and almost every project that's delivered is a customized project, whether it's in widths. Uh, obviously, manufacturers offer standard widths. Uh, Alvarado's are a 28-inch walkway and a 36-inch walkway. Um, however, based on the components that they use to build a product with, the walkways can span up to 48 inches in width. And uh, you can have multiple different types of customizations, whether it's powder coating, whether it's different types of panel material, 
um, etching, lighting, sound effects, which call it what you will, everything is customizable and nothing's off the table. The only, the only club drawback is how much do you want to spend? Okay, thank you. you and uh, just, sorry? Do you see the screen now, Steve, or is it still blank? Uh, now we're, uh, we're on your welcome screen, so I okay. think there's a, a bit of trouble with it there. Okay. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, what we can do is, uh, for everybody who has signed up and is, uh, has allowed contact uh, from the sponsor, uh, Troy can send out uh, both a copy of this presentation uh, and any video links that didn't show up to you after the fact. I'll be giving him your contact info uh, so we can get that out to you. And uh, actually, uh, if you don't, if you're able to go to your last uh, slide there, Troy, we'll just remind everybody of your uh, contact info and then uh, the same. If they didn't uh, answer yes to being contacted and still want some info, uh, they can reach out to you. Great. There All it is up on the screen there. Yeah. So please feel free to jump to our website if you have further questions or contact me directly. Um, I can definitely steer you in the right direction or put you in touch with folks who, who would be able to assist you even further. Um, but I'm a good point to start with if you wish. Great. And uh, next question. Do turnstiles pose any issues with building codes and egress during fire alarms? Oh yeah, very much so. Because they are a barrier in an egress, um, in an egress hallway, if you will. So you have to make sure that um, a, your turnstiles have enough clearance width to allow for egress, and depending on the jurisdiction, you may actually need you, um, adjacent swing gates to uh, satisfy egress codes. Um, you have to ensure that the, uh, the exiting of a turnstile, if perhaps you're in a controlled environment where you have to present a card to go in and a card to go out, that if you forgot your card in an emergency situation, other than a fire, for example, you have to ensure that occupants can be able to enter into that laneway, push on the barriers and egress out, much like they'd be pushing on a handicap operated door. Not much force, but allow them to get out of that facility. There is a lot of building code and fire and egress code that needs to be complied with. Um, we can help you with that. It's not as simple as just putting a turnstile in play and connecting it up. Um, there is a lot of um, other things to follow. And when I mentioned that point that projects are larger in scope because they do involve different disciplines um, and we can help you navigate that. Great, and we have time for uh, one more question. For the turnstiles that have support for RFID, is there a compartment to put the reader in so it's invisible or is it a custom plate that goes on top? Um, the majority of turnstiles today have the ability to recess that reader underneath the top lid. I'm trying to find a photo here. So um, there. So underneath this inlay, if you will, is where that reader would be housed, RFID or, or multifunction, whatever it might be. So yes, they would be surface or, or recessed within the unit itself. And that's a standard feature with most manufacturers today. Okay. That brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you for joining us. And once again, thank you to Troy McCleary and Alvarado for their support. Great, At thank you for having us. At the close of this session, a link to register for next week's session will pop up. Please be sure to register. We look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, be well.